welcome to this video on where the Epiphones are actually getting worse from 1998. This one, one you would buy now. This is made in Korea. A lot of people have very strong opinions about Korean generation of guitars. They say they are fantastic. It's Epiphone in its golden era. Those are the ones you should go for. With the latest versions, they're going up in price all the time. They can be really expensive Epiphones these days. This is one of the mid price ones. This comparison is quite high stakes for me because hopefully by the end of this, I'll have decided which one of these I'm gonna sell and which one I'm gonna keep. We'll do it in several parts, external, what are the differences? We'll look at the internals, what are the differences there? General quality QC, we'll do a sound demo and then we'll do my conclusions and my personal thoughts and journey with these two guitars and what I think you should do if you're in the market for one or the other. So externally, Kalamazoo has stock on the new one. Looks really nice, with mother of pearl style. The old one has that clip dove wing people do have really mixed opinions about that a lot of the time. I know lots of people really hate this. I'm fairly ambivalent about it. It looks okay. Now, what I wanted to show you without completely destroying my two guitars, the new headstock is substantially fatter and wider, which pushes the strings out at more of an angle than they're at on the old one. These actually go more direct straight angle up the headstock. Now that could mean the famous problems with your G string issues of tuning, it might have a difference to that. For me, on these two guitars, I've not had problems with tunings on either, but it might, it might be something to consider if you're looking into these two guitars. Closer style tuners on this one, on the old style 98. I know you can get versions with Grover, so I'm not gonna pull them up too far on that. There's other things that I'll be pulling them up on, don't you worry. This is one, which is a funny old one. I mentioned this in my original review. These are Wilkinson tuners. They mentioned Grover tuners on the Epiphone website. They can change any of the specs at any time to keep up with the quality of the instrument. I think that's fine. These are actually excellent, excellent tuners. If anything, the difference here, I would say these are a bit tighter on the new one. They feel good. There's a little bit more definition when turning these. There's a little bit more play in these older ones. Having said that, you're talking about a guitar which is going on towards 30 years old. It's over 25 at this point. So it's had a good innings and it's gonna keep going, but it's an older guitar. So you've got to give it a little bit of slack on that side. ABS nut, ABS nut on this one as well. This is still going strong after a lot of years in play versus the newer one, which is looking pretty good as well. It seems to be, it's cut very nicely, cut nicely too, no sort of edges there. It's not a problem that. One thing on the new studio, um, you'll see they're not really brilliantly countersunk the screws on the truss rod cover. On the old one, it is pretty much spot on. It's starting to note because we're quite uh, particular about this. So in terms of the fretboard, I know for a fact this is Laurel these days, obviously sustainability. On the old version of the studio, you do have a rosewood fretboard. You can see the difference. The rosewood is actually a decent amount darker than the Laurel. The Laurel, having said that, and I do think this is very pretty, again, it's gonna vary guitar to guitar, the laurel on here, you have a darker shade and you have a lighter shade on this one. So it actually, it's, it's got a very beautiful look to it. I have absolutely no problem with that kind of style of wood. The fretboard edges are a little bit more at an angle. So actually now playability wise, this one is a little bit more sort of sharp, if you like, on the edge of your hand. It's nothing severe, it's, it feels very nice. Indeed, it feels very good. But if I just actually hold up the, uh, the new one, you can probably see the difference straight away. They've rounded off the edges a bit more. So there's um, a good sort of QC done on the new ones. I'm not saying the old ones are bad. The neck profile, two guitars, they're both slim tapered, have quite nice shoulders on them. They're not super fat. I recently did, again, I'll point to my review on this one. But in terms of the actual neck profile, they are very, very close in terms of neck profile. That slim taper D, it does have that, uh, it does have the shoulders. It, they're very, very close. They feel really good. It's not a super chunky neck that you'd find on a 59 Les Paul or something like that, but it's a really comfortable neck. And it's obviously a 43 millimeter nut on both. That's, that's standard, that's normal. In terms of fret ends, the new Les Paul Studio feels really nice and smooth. There aren't any fret ends that you're gonna cut yourself on this one for sure. Feels really nice. The fret ends on the Les Paul Studio from 1998 feel really nice as well. There's no sharp fret ends on this one. Feels really nice, very smooth up and down. On the old one, 
you get a little poker chip for your Switch. Very nice. On the new one, you ain't going to be so lucky. At least I wasn't in my box. Please let me know in the comments if you've got one in your box. I believe the new versions do not come with a poker chip. C'est la vie. Oh well, um, it's not the end of the world, is it? Got the Epiphone Pro Buckers. We will see the difference between these when we get to the sound demo. And you can tell me what you think. Now, a big difference, big, big, big difference on the new one. You do have push-pull. So you can get single coils on these two pickups. And then you've got, a, obviously, because you've got your rhythm and treble switch here, you can flip between them to give you all sorts of different nice tones. Now, that is something you do not have on the old one, which is a bit of a shame that how many people you really use the, the split coils. Again, I would love to know that in the comments. Do let me know if you actually use the split coils. I didn't think I would on this, but surprisingly, because the function is there, I rather enjoy using it. For reference, let's hear the humbucker. So it's got quite a nice full, but still punchy, punchy sound on these on these pickups they do sound really good I really like these pickups so if I put the bridge pickup on a split core position thins out. it is quite fun to uh, mess about with so pick guards on both they're interchangeable so if you were to get uh, a pick guard for this one you could flip it onto this as well and have have some fun now I wanted to show you something which is quite interesting I really I think this is a big difference between the two guitars so hopefully I can do this without smashing something so that is the thickness of the old style studio this is bear in mind this is 98 so this is how they were doing them back then and this does not actually by the looks of it have any kind of weight relief we're talking about a guitar which is fairly thin and weighs at about 3.4 kilograms there's no weight relief in this but it is quite skinny so it is much more along the lines of a les paul special 2 kind of thickness the new style is in fact pretty close to a full thickness les paul they have done their ultra modern weight relief on this guitar that means that although it's full thickness or close to these guitars both weigh about 3.4 kilograms give or take i have a preference for sort of fatter les pulls i like that so there you go the internals so what does it look like that is where we might get into some qc now, i've already mentioned that this has got split coils on the new guitar it has cts pots which is a rather nice feature. And CTS means that you really have got something which is pretty much at the top. You're not gonna get much better than CTS. Split coils look good as well. This is your quick connect. The wiring is okay in here. The routing of this is fine. I would say it's maybe a little bit on the rough side in terms of um, the finishing in here, but again, that that's not something that's not something that's a huge deal. I mean, as if many people really go into this and they're that concerned about this sort of paint job in here. I know um, I've mentioned shielding in the past in terms of the uh, the cavity. That's going to matter less or more to some people. Doesn't really like there's any shielding in here. To be fair, you don't really need it these days. Um, necessarily in a dual humbucker guitar if everything is ship shape and it's grounded properly it looks fine and it's got nice decent quality parts inside very very nice indeed fine switch yeah okay looks alright again you can see that quite a nice big giant hole in there which indicates you have got some nice weight relief in these guitars now this one this is the old style now again the routing looks clean it actually is a little bit, I mean, you know, arguably it's a little bit cleaner um, than the new one, but it's no big deal. Now, the difference is in this one, A500, these are alpha parts. So they're not the CTS jobs. Um, it's quick connect. That's the quick connect. They're both quick connect. They both look good in there. Um, so really, and that's the switch again. That looks pretty decent in there. Nothing too alarming in either of these guitars. They both look very solid indeed. And they both have the, obviously it's the stop tail bridge and tail piece. The new guitar has the tunematic stop tail and bridge piece. And as you can see, it has these little clips inside. These are really cool. They keep it nice and firmly in place. It's a nice little feature. So let's have a cheeky peek inside the pickup cavities. This is the bridge pickup. And this pickup is designed by Epiphone USA, as you can see, BB. I'm assuming that means bridge pickup. And inside the cavity itself, you can see it's fairly cleanly cut. Um, it looks like there's a bit of dust there. It's no big deal. 
Um, what you can see though, is that sort of chambered weight relief, which, you know, is quite a big route, big hole through there. And we might see the same thing when we come to the neck pickup as well. Let's have a look. So this one, again, designed by USA, yet yeah, BN, so that'd be the neck pickup. And we've got a similar thing there. Look, you can see that sort of weight relief there. You can see that big chamber. Um, I'll pop the image up that I had before as well. And you can see that it looks quite nicely cut. And there you go, that's inside. No long neck tenon per se, um, but it's quite nicely done. There you are. The stop tail bridge and tail piece on the 98 look like good quality, but they don't have the little clips that the new one does. Looking inside the pickup cavities of the 98, you can see it looks fairly neatly done. The wiring looks okay. Now what is interesting though, is that the pickup itself has no particular branding on it, unlike the new ones. This, to my knowledge, has never been modified. So I'd love to know what you think in the comments. And we'll have a look at the neck pickup as well. And we've got a similar deal. So again, no branding on there. It looks fairly decently cut inside. So we will get, I think at this stage, into the sound demo, and then I will give some final thoughts on these. <laughs> So let's test the smoothness of the tone and volume roll off as well. See if those controls work well. So first of all, let's try the old one. That's the volume. Seems to be very smooth indeed. It's really nice. This is the tone. got a lot to play with there it's very very smooth you've got lots of gradation in the volume and tone knobs on this guitar let's see how the new one fares so this is the new one and we'll see how we do with this one too interesting it sounds really nice, sounds really good, but um, you could probably tell there on the volume, the uh, the drop off is actually quite a bit more sudden on this one than it is on the old one, despite being CTS pots or etc. I suppose it depends where you've got smooth taper, what have you on the pots. These are a little bit more of a, of a sudden drop off. On At least on the volume, let's try tone. <laughs> similar sort of deal on the tone as well still sounds brilliant still sounds really great um, but it is much more of a of a kind of an on-off situation yeah, there's a little bit of gradation there but the gradation is actually not quite as much as it is on the old one
These are both really brilliant guitars. It really just depends on what your mileage is and as far as an old guitar and how brave you're feeling, how much of a chance you're willing to take, these old guitars are really brilliant. The general feel and finish of the guitar, I would say right now that Chinese made Epiphones are actually pretty stunning instruments. So as well, it's worth mentioning, in terms of the string height, able to get the strings really low on this with no problem, no buzzing, um, no issues at all. Um, similar thing on the Korean, I was going to mention my personal journey. I actually thought I started off by buying this one and I like the studio so much that I thought, well, I'll get a new one, see, we'll see what the differences are. I actually ended up liking both guitars massively. I think they're both brilliant guitars. If you're in the market for one, I would say if you can try them, do. If you can't, my recommendation probably, probably would be if you're fairly new to any sort of modding or anything else, just do yourself a favor, just get the new one and be done with it and you're gonna be incredibly happy. Obviously there's the big debate at the moment about the prices of these guitars. Some of these Chinese made Epiphones are going up into the Gibson prices now. You can be paying 1500 plus for, for an Epiphone these days. On that note of more expensive Epiphones, just for fun, let's have a quick look at this one. Uh, this is my Slash Les Paul, a recent acquisition. This is one that I will be featuring on the channel as well. This is one of the uh, more expensive ones compared to the studio, but it's a really, really fabulous guitar. Anyway, more of that in another video. You could say in a sense, there's no stigma attached to this name on the headstock anymore. Having said that, I know people do have strong opinions for and against, hence making this video, because I thought it was just an inter interesting topic to cover. The other thing actually to mention was they do both have carved tops. They're both very nice guitars. You can't be too sad with either one, but the older one is gonna be cheaper. You pay your money, takes a chance. Enjoy life, enjoy the day. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments and um, see you in the next one, bye. Now I've got a little bonus for all the real guitar nerds out there, myself included. If you're still watching this, I applaud you massively. Welcome to Geeksville. Uh, this is the resistance readings for the pickups. So on the treble setting, which is the bridge pickup, we've got 8.48K ohms. Both pickups, we're looking at 4.14K ohms. And on the neck pickup, 8.10 or thereabouts. So there you go, and we'll do the new one as well. On the new Les Paul Studio, we've got 7.9 on the bridge pickup. We've got 3.85 for both, and we've got on the neck pickup, 7.54. And if we do split coils, let's do that quickly. We have got 3.8, 1.93, and 3.95. So we've got slightly less resistance on this guitar compared to the old one. On the headstock side of things, actually there's two things, a very actually a very, very in interesting, cool thing I'm about to show you. Um, the studio logo is different. There's a slightly different font used. And the old one I think is slightly, yeah, it's slightly stubbier than the new one. That's the new one, that's the old one. 